Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about the books I read in the month of October. So I read quite a few books I really enjoyed and a couple I didn't enjoy as much. So I'm going to start with a graphic novel that sadly I didn't enjoy very much at all and that is Dog Days by Anya Dahl Overby. I've definitely said that wrong. So this is a graphic novel by a Norwegian artist and writer and I picked this up because I like the look of the artwork and also this is a coming of age story about a young girl and I really enjoy those sorts of stories as you may know. And I just found this wasn't really much of anything so there's not really, I can't really criticise this, there's nothing that bothered me. I liked the artwork, I liked the characters, I liked the story, but I just didn't feel a big emotional attachment to any of it. Nothing made me feel particularly connected, I don't remember the characters' names, I just found it all quite, ugh. you know when you read something and you're like, okay, like that was just fine, but I'm going to forget about that like very soon after reading it. That's how I felt with this one, so I wouldn't really recommend this. I think that a book like this one summer by the Tamakis is like infinitely better, so yeah, this one was a little bit of a letdown for me. And then another book which I purchased recently and also didn't really enjoy is 60 Degrees North Around the World in Search of Home by Malachi Talek. So this is a non-fiction book which is about the author travelling around all the countries that the um, 60 Degrees North line goes through. So we have, so he's from the Isle of Shetland and he travels to um, Greenland, Canada, Russia, Siberia, um, Norway... <laughs> Finland, Sweden, I might have missed a couple of places but lots of places that are very cold and he sort of spends about 30 pages on each of those places and I just found this book a bit of a confused mishmash of stuff so the author spends time talking about the idea of home and what missing a place is or wanting to be in a place on a sort of nostalgia um, for a place and that's certainly focused on like the more memoir parts of the book are focused on that and also when he was around 12 or 13 his father passed away quite suddenly um, and lots of his feelings of not connecting to Shetland are because of the loss of his father who never lived there with him so he comes back to those thoughts throughout the book and I, I enjoyed those segments what I found didn't work was when he actually wrote about the places he was visiting which is bizarre so I've read his recent novel which I really enjoyed and think he writes beautifully about landscapes and characters and I just didn't feel the connection to this so he tried to write about the politics and the history and the socio-economic status and also the natural landscape of all these places and I just found it all quite dry and not interesting to read when when actually I should have been really interested in all this stuff because I love learning about countries I don't know about so I don't know what it was but just the the tone um, didn't work for me and I just found the direction of this book a bit confusing so I ended up taking the whole month to read this and I know when I'm not enjoying a book because I keep a stack of books underneath my coffee table that I'm working my way through and if a book sits there for longer than a couple of weeks generally it's because I'm not loving it um, and this sat there for the whole month before I eventually sort of forced myself to finish it and to be honest by the last sort of 50 pages I was skipping like two or three pages at a time if I saw he was writing about history I skip it because I just d don't enjoy the way he relates history at all. I find it really dry. So um, this is one I probably should have DNF'd, but I'd, I'd got so far through that I wanted to try and finish it. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend this, but actually a lot of other people who reviewed this on Goodreads have seemed to enjoy it much more than I did. So yeah, maybe go check out the reviews. Then another one I didn't love, but I certainly enjoyed more than the past two, is Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Now, I was always a bit worried about this one because... I loved The Essex Serpent, but then I tried to read her first novel, which I think is called After Me Comes the Flood, and I DNF'd it. And I found that whilst her atmosphere and her use of the gothic is brilliant, her characterisation and dialogue was quite dry. So I was a bit concerned when I heard this was a contemporary novel, because I think what she excels in is capturing history, and what she did beautifully in The Essex Serpent. And I enjoyed this book, but I didn't love it. So it falls somewhere in between of the way I feel about her other two novels. So if you don't know, this is sort of a contemporary horror story, I guess. It's set in Prague and we follow a lady who um, is given a manuscript about a, I guess, 
I, I don't know if you'd call it a person, a ghost, a creature called Melmoth, who is a, a woman who appears um, in your darkest moments and says that she's been watching you and she's come to take you away with her um, and that she, you know, she doesn't um, despise you for the awful things she's seen you do, but that other people will. Um, and she asks you to take her hand and follow her. And um, our main character is reading manuscripts about people who have seen Melmoth the Witness, the Wanderer. And so I didn't like the, the protagonist, and I don't think you're really supposed to, and I didn't like anyone in the present day storyline. I found the best bits of this book were the historical sections, um, so we moved through the world wars and some of the manuscripts, and I found that, that they were better. Um, I enjoyed some of their commentary on, on the history um, within the manuscripts, but I found I didn't really care about any of the characters, and I feel like you need to care a bit when you're worried if they're going to live or die and I didn't and I found that I wasn't really frightened at all and I feel like whilst I think it's difficult to be scared when reading a book at least for me um, I have read books like The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters where I have felt scared and I just didn't at all by this so yeah in the end I, I, I enjoyed this one but I didn't love it and um, I wouldn't like really recommend this so um yeah compared to the Essex effort this was uh, a real disappointment but in a way I was sort of expecting it so wasn't too glad about it so there's that one then I listened to an audiobook and that is Summers at Castle Auburn by Sharon Shin I think so I will put a photo of it up here somewhere so I heard um Jean talk about this one in she's done a lot of recent videos on um books that feature fairies um and I really like the sound of this one I just thought it sounded like a nice cozy easy listen and it was certainly that um so this story follows a young girl I think she's around 30 when the story opens and she is the bastard child of um, like a man who's sort of born into royalty and her um, father passes away when she's very young and her uncle um, goes and makes an agreement with her grandmother that every summer she will spend time at the royal court of the royal castle um, and we start the story when she's around 13 and she's incredibly naive and it's obvious that the future king who's around her age is a dick um, but she thinks he's wonderful and also there are these fairy-like creatures who are enslaved and we as the reader know that's awful um, but she doesn't really recognise that. So we follow her throughout the next sort of, I don't know, five or six summers as she slowly starts to realise that not everything is as she once thought and she starts to grow up and learn more. Now, this is a really cosy audiobook, it's a really easy listen, I think the narrator's pretty good, um, I really enjoyed this, I, you know, wasn't um, massively into reading in October, um, especially at the start of the month, and um, this one was just a really pleasant listen, and I certainly enjoyed it, but the narrator is quite annoying, and that's because she's so naive that sometimes I think that it took a little bit too long for her to realise what a prick the soon to be king was, um, and also how awful the slavery was so yeah she's a little bit frustrating um, and also you know the story's fairly predictable nothing really crazy happens but uh, you know I wasn't reading it for that so I feel like if there was another book set in this world um, and it was on audio I'd give it a listen um, and any other books by this author I'd ha happily give a listen I don't think I like any of these books enough to read them um, but I quite like audiobooks of this nature they're just sort of easy cosy listen so I'd, I'd certainly recommend it and I'm glad I gave it a listen so I've just remembered that I also listened to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows on audio I usually mention rereads at the start but I forgot so I obviously love this one and gave it five stars as always always um I always feel like the seventh one is one of my least favorites and that's because I always find it really sad that there's no happy Hogwarts in it and I always struggle at a section at the start of the book when Ron Harry and Hermione have gone off um in the tent and um, just before Ron deserts them I always find it you know, a couple of depressing chapters and I always end up pausing the audiobook and not listening for a while because I'm like oh this isn't the Harry Potter I know and love um and then I go back to it and I'm like you're an idiot this is still amazing and then like stuff starts to kick off and I really really love it and I love the big chapter about Dumbledore and I love the big chapter about Snape but there's always part of me that just doesn't love this book as much I feel like a lot of stuff gets revealed which is great um you get lots of epic moments with characters and bravery and love and things like that but I do love the books where we have Hogwarts where we have more um, run of the mill things like lessons at Hogwarts or them chilling in the common room 
or they're meeting in the great hall um so i just feel like i always feel the loss of that in the seventh one so um yeah really love it it's amazing but sad that no happy hogwarts so the next three books i really really enjoyed so i'm looking forward to chatting about those so we have wondersmith the calling of morrigan crow by jessica townsend now i don't really know what this series is going to be called because it says a nevermore book but then i feel like this title should have remained nevermore like are they going to change every time now or are they going to stay wondersmith or go back to nevermore i don't know very odd um so this is the second book in what's going to be i think a nine book series and I assumed we followed nine years because I think the first book followed a whole year. But actually I've worked it out. I think this book only followed six months. So perhaps we're not going to follow nine years of her life. I'm not quite sure. So I really enjoyed this book. I think she's a wonderful children's book author and I certainly recommend these books. I will say I didn't love this anywhere near as much as the first one. I feel like the first one was really magical. It was really funny and it has distinct scenes that I remember um, and feel filled with joy when I remember them and I feel like this one doesn't have that as much and I feel like that's because the book starts you're aware of where the author needs to get to you sort of know where the book's going to end and then she just spends the book getting there and it's not quite as exciting as the first book was with the trials and then I thought that this book would go for longer so we'd have a whole year and we'd see some other stuff happening and then you don't like it it just spends longer getting to the point I thought it would get at. so I enjoyed this it's a really good read but I do think the first book had more um wonderful moments and more funny moments and I feel like this is a bit of a stepping stone book I feel like this happens a lot in um children's series you know a lot of people say about the chamber of secrets you know um it had the harry potter books the first book is this welcome to this magical world um and the third book is you starting to uncover some of harry's family's history um the real subplot starts you know the the, the subplot the, you know the plot that sort of runs underneath all the books but the second one lacks both the welcome and this um undercurrent um and that that's the same for a lot of children's book series um so perhaps this is just going to be one of those sort of more filler books and i still really enjoyed it but i think nevermore is is a significantly stronger book so there's that one then we have all among the barley by melissa harrison i really love the cover of this book um i think the blend of um the color the photography and the typography is just wonderful so anyway the actual book this is set in 1933 and we follow a young girl called Edie who lives on a farm in Suffolk which is where I grew up and the book opens with a slightly older woman I think she's probably in her 20s called Constance who arrives from London and she's arrived to document what she calls fading rural traditions so we're following the story through Edie's eyes and Edie's quite a, a closeted naive character this um, entrance of Constance into her life really shifts things um, it makes her aware of other possibilities and um, Constance is an independent woman um, she's much more educated and she's from London um, so she's you know from a very different scene that Edie is used to this book is beautifully written okay so Melissa Harrison writes landscape and nature writing exquisitely so if you enjoy really descriptive books then you know I think this does that amazingly well I also loved um, the social commentary throughout this book which never felt heavy-handed so it's a brilliant coming of age story um it's excellent nature writing it's a great character study it looks at all those things and wrapped up in that is this underlying tension i don't want to give away the reasons for the tension but there's some tension in this story that keeps you on the edge of your seat for edie throughout the novel um and and really worrying that she may make a mistake that might lead to something or someone else may do something that will lead to something um and i just i really enjoyed this book i love edie as a character i adore her mum and i love her grandparents like all of her grandparents are just lovely um so i'd really recommend this book if you like slow moving um character studies with beautiful descriptive writing i think this is a really great book and i'd highly recommend it so that's all among the barley and then lastly we have normal people by sally bruni now i've been thinking since i've read this book about how i want to talk about it on the channel because i adored it it's the by far the best book i've read this year um perhaps the best book i've read in a couple of years i really thought it was phenomenal um 
And so I feel like I really want to spend some time talking about it. Um, but I feel like it's been um, spoken about quite a lot. You know, it was a long list for the man Booker. Um, and I feel like if I talk about it, I'll just gush. Um, because that's what I tend to do when I really love a book. So um, I may still talk about this in another video. I'm not quite sure. I'm planning to read conversations with friends very soon. So I may, um, you know, talk about them both in the same video. Although I'm not expecting to love conversations with friends as much because I just adored this. Like, I thought it was so, so wonderful. So I want to preface this with saying that I didn't expect to like this at all. Um, I, I didn't read conversations with friends because I thought that it sounded um, really stripped back and modern. Um, and pretentious and I just didn't want to give it a chance and then I heard that this was a long list of the man Booker um, and I heard it was about a relationship and I thought Do you know what that sounds a bit more intriguing you know I'll request it from the publisher it's not really anything to lose and when it arrived I read the first two pages and I was like I really like this writing style um, and then when I picked it up I just couldn't put it down I read this in two sittings I had to go to work in between and I was gutted I was thinking about it the whole time I was at work um, and I just wanted to be with these characters so if you have any recommendations for books like this that deal with relationships in this way then please 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 um, you know write them down below because I'd really love to read more books that deal with relationships in this way so Normal People favourite read of the year by far so yeah there's that one so those are the books I read in October. Thanks for watching, especially the ramble at the end. And I also just wanted to say, um, I recently created a Patreon account and quite a few people have um, come over there and been patrons. Thank you so, so much. Um, I was really surprised at how many of you there are and I'm so like infinitely grateful. Um, and I'm really looking forward to um, putting more content up for you there and to reading the book that you guys selected for me. So thank you so much. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.